Welcome back everybody. I'm so excited to have you here because today I am talking about how to become an OBGYN. So stay tuned. All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about and give you a roadmap about how to become an OBGYN. First, if you're in high school and you're watching this, I want you to go up here and check out a video I made just for you all, which is basically what to do in high school if you want to become a doctor. It's okay if you're already thinking about that, and I think it's awesome if you're thinking about that in high school. So check that video out and then come on back here. Okay, so I get asked a bunch of times, how did you become an OBGYN? How do I do it? So let's break it down step by step so that you've got a roadmap. And remember, I've got tons of references and resources in my show notes. First things first, let's take a step back and make sure that you want to become an OBGYN and you understand what we do. And I'm not trying to talk you out of becoming an obstetrician and gynecologist, but understand that when it comes to what we traditionally call women's health, we are but one part of the whole equation. So there's OBGYNs, we are board certified physicians and we can care for women throughout their reproductive years and beyond. We can do surgeries, we deliver babies, we do lots of awesome stuff, but we're not the only ones. You could also become a midwife, a certified nurse midwife who handles low risk pregnancies, routine care, um, menopausal care, family planning, that kind of thing. You could also be involved in the healthcare of those with vaginas, uteruses, those who identify as female by becoming a physician's assistant or a nurse practitioner. Lots of different ways. The bottom line is, is that these are all very different in what you can do, what you can't do, what you're trained, how you work, how you interact with patients, can you operate or not, do you work in a hospital or just in an office? So I think it's important to understand your options. And so I've listed some of those references down in the show notes so you can kind of look and see. I don't want you to just think you have to be an OBGYN to be involved in you know, family planning care or delivering babies. We're one piece of the puzzle. Okay, so if you've decided you want to be an OBGYN, let's get going. So yes, you need to go to high school and, and do the best that you can. You don't have to be perfect. And then your next step is to go to college. You may wonder, does it matter what college I go to in order for me to be able to get into medical school and beyond? Hold that thought. You may wonder if you need to get into a certain college in order to be able to get into medical school. And the answer is not really. You get into the college and go to the college that's right for you. It might be a big name Ivy League school. It might be a state school. It might be a small liberal arts school. It doesn't matter. It just matters that you go to one where you can do your best and you can excel. When it comes to knowing what to major in in college, I get asked this all the time. Should I major in biology? Should I major in something in the sciences in order to be able to become a physician? And the answer is absolutely not. Only do it if you want to because having to major in biology if you don't love it is going to totally suck so yes you do have to get certain courses under your belt in order to be prepared for and take the mcat which is the medical college admissions test and also to be able to apply to medical schools and i've linked down below what those prerequisites are but basically there are a handful of science courses like biology, chemistry, physics, and some other things. But by no means do you have to major in science. And you majoring in science does not mean that you're going to do better at medical school or you're more likely to get to medical school, not at all. I've got a little secret, which you learn in college over the course of one semester is about what you'll learn in about two weeks in medical school. So totally awesome if you wanna major in biochemistry, but if not, you'll get it in med school. Okay, so choose a major that you love. To be honest, I think it's awesome if you don't major in science because then you've got this whole other area of expertise and understanding that's not having to do with biology or chemistry or pharmacology. I mean, you'll get that in medical school that's going to be the rest of your life. So why not use this time to dive into something else that makes you a more interesting person, a more well-rounded person? By all means, major in biology if it's what you love. It's what I did. But I also minored in chemistry and English. And for me, the English was the fun part. So just major in whatever you want. Do the best that you can. Connect with your medical school admissions, your pre-med committee early. Try to get a face-to-face -face relationship with them because these are the ones that are going to be writing your letters of recommendation for medical school. They are the ones who are going to be helping you prepare for interviews. They are the ones who are going to be able to say, you know what? I think you should apply to these medical schools or I think these might be a good fit for you. So it's really good to get your pre-med advisor um, relationships solidified as soon as you can. That way you can really work towards a really strong medical school application. Speaking of med school applications, what does that entail? Well, there's no one way to get into medical school. And as you may have heard, applications have actually gone up during this pandemic, which I think is really cool to be honest. There is no one right way to get into med school. Quite frankly, you should be able to demonstrate why you want to be a physician. And it shouldn't just be because your mom's a physician or because you think it's a cool way to make money or 
whatever. You have to really understand what you want to do. And to that end, while you're in college and maybe even in high school, if you can volunteer to really get some clinical experience, that will not only let you know if that you want to be a physician and an OBGYN, and if you don't know and you just know you want to go to med school, that's cool too. But it also shows on your application that you've got some dedication and you know what you're signing up for. And that's a good thing. So whatever your application is, just do the best that you can. Have lots of different interests. Volunteer. Have clinical experience if you can get it. Do research if you like research. Don't feel that you have to. I mean, there I, we could go on and on about how to get into medical school. But the bottom line is, do the best that you can. And when it comes to the MCAT... You prepare the best that you can and you take it. You might want to take it in college. You might want to wait a little bit and take some time. Whatever feels right for you. I did terribly on my MCAT and I still got into med school, but I could have just as easily not and I would have retaken it. So I want you to know that it's a hard test. Study the best that you can, take review courses, but know that it's not the end all be all to becoming a physician. Okay, you've gotten into medical school. That's awesome. And you think that you want to be an OBGYN, even cooler. So for most schools, they have a pretty standardized curriculum the first two years where you're learning all the basic coursework. But in that time, there's tons of opportunities to be able to get into the clinics, get into the hospital, not only so that you can kind of see what you might be interested in, but also to get a break from the books and give you some perspective about why you are studying so many hours a day. So if you have the opportunity to link up with an OBGYN or a midwife and you can shadow them in clinic, that's what I did. And I loved it because I got to see like, oh gosh, this is why I'm here. This is what I'm doing. I think I'm into OBGYN. I'm not sure. I wasn't always sure, really, not until I did my med school rotations. But I had an idea. That's what I liked. And so I was able to see that early on. Med school, it's like drinking from a fire hose. Tons of information. You do the best that you can. You will not be perfect. That is okay. Work hard but play hard too and make sure that you have some fun because otherwise it's not worth it. You're traditionally the third and fourth years are when you do your rotations. And if you think that you might want to do OBGYN, you might want to have that rotation scheduled a little sooner in medical school because that way you can see if it's something you're really into. And then later on when you're planning your electives and getting letters of recommendation, you'll kind of be set up there. You may not want to do it as your first rotation because your first rotation as a third year medical student you don't always know a whole lot. So you might want to prepare by doing something that can help you be ready. And in OBGYN, we do surgery, we do clinic, we do a lot of fast paced things. So maybe putting in emergency room rotation or your surgery rotation prior to doing your OBGYN rotation can really help you shine. But that nitty gritty is beyond the scope of this YouTube. But the bottom line is try to do it earlier in the year so that way you know whether or not you want to do it. Okay, great, you've decided you want to be an OBGYN. So now it's time to apply to residency. After you finish medical school, whatever field you go into, you do your specialty training in a residency. And these can vary in terms of length of years. Three years is the shortest, and that's for fields like pediatrics, medicine, family medicine. And the longest ones, kind of makes sense, are like neurosurgery and things like that. Those can be upwards of like seven or eight years. OBGYN residency is four years. In those four years, you will get well-rounded training in the entire field of OBGYN. So you'll be on labor and delivery. You'll be managing patients who have pregnancy complications in the hospital. You'll be doing a GYN oncology rotation, so dealing with patients with cancer. Urogynecology, you know, issues with prolapse and um, fe female pelvic reconstruction. You'll be doing high-risk OB. You'll be doing family planning. You'll be doing clinic. You'll be doing primary care. You'll rotate through the intensive care unit, the emergency room most likely. When you finish your four years of residency, you are trained to work as a general OBGYN. And you'll take a written board exam right after residency, and then a couple years later, you'll take an oral exam, which we won't get into a whole lot here. But after you do those, you're a board certified OBGYN. But right after residency, you're trained to practice independently. You may decide after residency that you loved one specific area of obstetrics and gynecology and you want to do just that. So you might then do a fellowship, which is additional specialized training. For example, you might want to only do um, cancer care. And so you will do a fellowship in GYN oncology, or you love high risk OBGYN and ultrasound. And so you're going to do a fellowship in maternal fetal medicine. That's an additional application and training process and an additional certification process. So when you graduate OBGYN residency, like I said, you are qualified to do a whole bunch of stuff. And you may decide that you want to be the typical generalist OBGYN who sees patients in clinic, does surgeries, works on labor and delivery too, and delivers her babies. You may decide that you might want to do what I do, which is I work as an obstetric hospitalist. I only work on labor and delivery, and I love that. You may decide that you're going to do one thing for a bit, and then you switch it up. In OBGYN, there's a ton of opportunity to make the career personalized to what you want. That was a lot of information on how to become an OBGYN. 
If you have questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section. And as always, follow me on Instagram and TikTok where you'll get a lot more of my content at Dr. Jennifer Lincoln right up here. And I hope that that helped you. And if you think that you want to be an OBGYN, I'm so excited to potentially have you in our field. It's an awesome way of life. It's a little crazy too. Maybe I'll talk about that one day, but I hope this was a good guidepost for you. All right, everybody, stay safe out there.